Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Smith and welcome to Devlog Zero about my game The Endless Arc. The Endless Arc is an action-adventure roguelite involving random generation and a mix with the adventure genre. Game programmer Ara is forced into the vibrant and quirky world of the Ark, a game of her own creation. Yeah, she is stuck inside her own game. I really took to games like Enter the Gungeon, Forager, Heartbound and Garden Story since this game is basically a combination of adventure and dungeon based gameplay with a wholesome experience blended in. Now there's much more to it that makes it unique, so be sure to listen on. But the way the game will work is you can go into dungeons, fight enemies, unlock new items and weapons, all that stuff, but also unlock new adventure areas. And these Crash Bandicoot inspired slots on these portals will have something to do with that. You can then explore these areas, progress the story, utilise what you've already unlocked and the skills you've gained to go further into these places. And who knows what waits on the other side? I'm, I'm super excited to share this with you and the progress I've made so far, so please join me on this quirky and fun game dev journey. I will leave timestamps through the video so you can skip to a part if something doesn't interest you. So before the Endless Arc even existed, I started making a prototype for a big adventure game I had in mind. I was in my final year of university at the time and I had to create something for my dissertation and after seeing the potential of Undertale and how fun it was, also being made by a solo developer, I felt that I wanted to give it a try. I mean, how cool would it be to make a game and for so many people to enjoy it and make a living in the process? Now, I will say this, being a solo developer is not easy. I've started to move away from that a bit myself because I know it's easy to manage and the end result will be much better, so I've started building a small team. Uh, the only problem with this project was that the scope of the game was too big. An open world adventure game, what I made like what, one rough game a long time ago? It, it doesn't make sense. So let's skip ahead about a year. I used to make let's play videos on YouTube and I was one of the first to make a video on the game Heartbound. The main developer Thor reached out to me to use my video on Steam. I eventually joined a Discord server, and after a period of time, he started a game jam of his own. I wasn't going to join at first, but his advice in making small games to start off with really resonated with me. April 23rd, I submitted a game prototype for the first Pirate Software game jam. This was the very first version of the Endless Arc, and I went into it very optimistic. I wanted to make something like a roguelite with random level generation. And yeah, <laughs> that turned out to be way out of my reach. But somehow, I found someone who was able to help me get a rough form of random generation together. Um, I ended up being a runner up for the game jam, which really motivated me to push forward with the project. And I decided to put the other game, the massive, big, open world game, on hold. And that's where this story officially begins. Oh, on a side note, I do have a Discord server you can join if you want to see updates or just come to chat with the community. It's a really nice place, trust me. The goal for this game was a randomly generated experience, which was new every time you played it. Basically a roguelite, but there wasn't really anything special about this game just yet. That wasn't until I started adding a bunch of other stuff. Now I am aware of feature creep and I've avoided adding certain things and taken some away. I've been down that rabbit hole before and I'm more prepared this time. There's a few core features I wanted to stick by. Variety, exploration and wholesomeness. Now I enjoy a range of genres, from games like Spyro, Garden Story, Heartbound, to others like Binding of Isaac and Enter the Gungeon. I wanted a game that really fits what I enjoy in the hopes that this combination will be something others enjoy too. Let's talk about Roguelite. Now this section embodies the variety aspect. So the Roguelite aspect involves what you'd expect, but in a chunk sort of way. Think of the game Forager, a super fun game that involves purchasing new islands chunks, to find new things and to expand your world. So let's go to the portal room quickly. There will be multiple different portal entrances to different dungeons. Now this allows the player to choose which order they play through the dungeons. This could be important depending on what they have currently equipped, or if I decide to add in elements, which I'll talk about later. So I'm taking this chunk idea of Forager and combining it with the diversity of Enter the Gungeon's room generation to create a random dungeon generation system that allows you to choose which path you want to take by purchasing them with a currency you can gain through different methods. There are different shaped chunks which can sometimes contain different things and it also helps to diversify the rooms so it doesn't get boring. For this I'm using GM Room Pack by Yellow Afterlife. Now this oh, is honestly the biggest lifesaver because even with the help of my assistant programmer, I was finding it very hard to develop a dungeon generation system that worked nicely. Now bear in mind I am not that good at programming in Game Maker Studio 2 and I don't even have a programming background. 
but I have gotten better since I've been making the game, but I do have a long way to go. I'm more of an arty guy myself. Now then, what would a roguelite be without weapons and items? Only this time I'm calling them mediums and charms. So I chose the name mediums because the fairy Somna, who travels with Aura on the journey, is able to possess objects you find and utilise their magic to shoot a variety of projectiles. Now this just helps give a reason for why you're able to do certain things, rather than just, you know, dying and resurrecting like a game. Even though you're in the game, there's a reason behind the things you do. Now, in terms of the weapons and items, I'm planning to have a lot of these since weapon and item variety in combination is super fun, and it's super cool to see strategies players come up with. Okay, so the idea in the back of my head is to utilise an elemental system like Genshin Impact, where weapons have elements and different reactions can occur depending on the element of the weapon, the enemies, the environment, or elemental afflictions. So these could affect both the player, the enemies, and possibly the environment, which could really add some strategy and cause the player to be a little more careful with their actions. As I said though, the idea is on the back burner for now, I want to get the main demo done first until I feel that I'm happy with it, and then add the extra features on top. So the adventure section, this embodies exploration. I wanted there to be more to do outside of just dungeon diving over and over. It's nice to take a breather sometimes and see what else there is that could help you progress the game or explore the world. Firstly we have the main hub. I want there to be lots to do here, but not too much as to get the player confused and lost. So we have a few characters in their houses, some unlockable areas, the portal to the dungeons, there will be some secrets scattered around and also this cliff with vines. Now this leads down to the beach. Uh, right now this isn't too important of an area, uh, though there is another unlockable area here, and also another house, which is a very cool feature. More on that soon! The unlockable areas are going to be heavily focused on being able to explore, fight roaming enemies, finding new stuff, also story progression and possibly bosses depending on the area, I guess something like a Zelda experience. I haven't completely figured out these areas just yet since they won't be in the demo, but I'm hoping that being able to explore the main hub, the houses and the beach would be enough to satisfy players in a demo to get a feel of what exploration could truly be. On to wholesomeness. So the obvious ones, no guns, no blood, no killing of animals or other people inside the game. It's all canonically a bunch of pixels and game code, and the fact that I'm combining two different genres together helps to achieve that since you'll have the time to relax, explore and interact with other characters and objects if you want to, or dive into dungeons and play over and over to get the best run possible and unlock even more content. Also the art style and settings of the levels themselves are also very colourful and rich in nature which really helps to define what kind of game this is. For example, if my game had sharp edges, dark colours and certain design choices, it may lead you to believe it to be a violent game, a lot of combat or feel very dark in nature. The fact that I've chosen a lot of bright colours and rounded happy clouds for example helps create a completely different feel. Also none of the characters in the game are truly evil. The virus that is trying to take over everything isn't evil either really. You may come to hate it and I don't blame you, but it's just doing what it's been made to do. Check out the movie Summer Wars, that was a big inspiration for this. So it doesn't hate, love or really care about what it does or doesn't do. Also I wanted to include some really cool guest features in my game. Two I have planned are Krabby from Moonshell Island, made by Cheeky Noughts, and Norman the Frog from A Frog's Tale, made by Norman. Uh, the games and the people are pretty awesome so I'll link them in the description for you to check out, please do. Also, there's a cool feature at the beach in Blueberry's house called the Slime Haven. You'll be able to save slimes throughout the game world and they'll end up here. You'll get extra bonuses in some form, but I won't say too much about this right now. So what's next? Next up is to work towards actually completing the demo. There's still plenty to do and I want it to be as good as possible so that the response from it is as good as possible. After the demo I'll likely work towards a Kickstarter campaign, but I won't think too much on that right now. Basically I just need to get everything completed that exists in the game at the moment. That includes artwork for the character houses, weapons and charms, uh, make sure they work properly for the dungeons and combat, character dialogue and portraits, anything unfinished. My main focus right now is going to be the artwork since I feel like I overwhelmed myself before with everything that had to be done and I took a bit of a break to kind of deal with other stuff in real life but I did get back into making gaming videos again which is super fun. Now I'm really looking forward to making more of these and I hope you are too so let me know what you think in the comment section and be sure to check out my Twitter or Discord server. I also have a Patreon if you fancy supporting and checking out stuff early. As always, believe in yourself. 
never give up. And I'll see you next time.